Now, hopefully, this video is going to contain some really satisfying footage. Hello guys and welcome back to the Carriage Works. Behind me is the BY van which we've seen in a number of episodes both in its um, current um, stripped down state and when it was in use as a workshop for the carriage maintenance guys. We are soon approaching the stage where it's going to be reassembled and it's going to look absolutely fantastic ready for steam illuminations later this year. So we thought we'd take the opportunity to do a walk around with our carriage shop manager Ian and find out a little bit more about the project. Right, I'm Ian Harwood and I'm in charge of running the carriage and wagon shed here and I'm going to show you BY765 where we've got to and what we're hoping to be achieving in a very short period of time. So this vehicle came in and there was uh, a lot of corrosion on it so the first main job we did was we changed this angle that runs right through, right through the vehicle. The old one was cut out and a new one's been fitted in. Um, the Yuri Society very kindly came and did the riveting for us so it's all been put back properly and we haven't cheated with nuts and bolts. So as the job's progressing um, I don't know if you can see inside here all the sole plates have been put in and the first layer of floor. We'll get the rest of the vehicle together and then a second layer of floor will go in right at the end which will all be nice and pristine with no footprints on it hopefully. And here on the buffer beam, it's all just basically been uh, cut back. There's been some repairs which are hiding underneath here, underneath the sole plate. But as you can see here, the, there was quite a bit of um, corrosion and we've actually welded up the height there. But there will be another plate put on and the timber and then the buffer goes on. As you can see at this stage, we've got new door pillars have been made up to be put in um, with some of the original ones and Gordon has um, very cleverly managed to mortise and tenon it all back in so we've got original bits and, and new bits all tied together with mortise and tenons. Um, this wall over here you can see is already down and in, um, complete with the original tenon into a new mortise. The next stage, all the timbers for the roof have already been made um, and painted up on the inside um, so the roof will be going on next once we've got this wall back in um, and the sideboards possibly be going on at the same time. Again, they've all been made, they're in the process of painting and as soon as we have enough painted we'll start cutting and fitting those um, all the way up. The original guard doors have been renovated, they're going back in um, and the eight luggage doors have all been rebuilt from scratch, um, reverse engineered from the tatty ones that came off. Um, and they're all being made at the moment. I can show you skeletons of that in a minute. Okay, so up here you can see some of the painting process going on. These are the side boards, which have to go through primer, two undercoats, two top coats, but the outside's obviously gonna be green, the inside's gonna be buff. So it takes quite a long process to get everything painted. Um, these ones, as I say, they're, they're getting painted up and we have more already finished and some that haven't even started yet. These are the guard stores, the original ones um, that uh, Tim, one of our carpenters, has renovated. He's spliced little bits in where it's gone. He's had a good look around them and he says they're good to go. So they'll be, um, when they're all painted up, they'll be the original doors refitted. The luggage doors, we have reverse engineered from the original doors and Ali has very cleverly um, made these frames up. Um, and as you can see they started in the painting process um, and then new tongue and groove and new glass in the windows um, is the next stage that needs to be done here. So my main job at the moment is making the cargo doors, they're pairs of double doors um, for the vehicle. This is the aperture where one set goes, there's four sets um, and the old ones were really quite rotten so they're needing complete replacement. Shall we go and have a look at the old ones and then the new ones? So these are the uh, old doors from the vehicle. As you can see they're a little bit moth-eaten. There's plenty of splits in the timber. Uh, there's quite a lot of rotten timber, especially at the bottoms of the doors and the tongue and groove boards that 
all in all mean they need replacement. We're going to be keeping all the metal work off them, such as the hinges and the handles, because that can all be cleaned up and reused, but the timber really does need replacing. So let's go and have a look at the new ones. So here's one of the new doors. Um, it's made of solid tapili, a nice hardwood that we use for most of our uh, timber work here. It's just started to be painted, so I've turned it over so we can see the nice bare timber. As you can see, it's all quite funky shapes in there, although it's a theoretically simple door. Um, I've used an awful lot of router jigs that I've made myself because we've reverse engineered all the doors um, from the original ones. We haven't got any drawings, so we've been having to make them up as we go along using the old ones uh, as patterns. So to manufacture the doors, I've made, like I said, quite a few router jigs. This is probably my funkiest one. This was for getting all the grooves down here on this face of the door. Um, I pretty much got it all in one hit, uh, but then I've obviously also had to uh, gouge out the mortises of which each one is different, which added to the complexity and the time, but we've got there. So there's other jigs that I've made. This was one for going through the planer at a strange angle. <laughs> And for getting the top of the door, we have this radius one. And they've all been made in-house. So the last thing I've had to make is a few drop light windows. Most of them have been salvageable, but I've needed to make three new ones. So this is what an old one looks like. And I've had to make, like I say, three new ones. There's a blank that we've done, so it's all mortars and tenon jointed together with little angles and pegs going in. Um, I, I just routed the first new one and typically it split out at the bottom there, so I've had to glue a new bit in, but it'll be all right. Um, for getting the concentric uh, rebates in there, I've made another set of jigs each one getting smaller um, so we get the steps in there for the glass and then the beadings which hold the glass in so hopefully that should all be done today <laughs> these are all the roof boards which eventually will make the roof up for the by um, as you can see we've painted the inside with gloss paint once it's all fitted it'll get one more coat in situ um, but the interesting bit about these small pieces i don't know if you can see the the radius on the on the timbers they've all been machined so that we can get round the tight corners on the on the edge of the roofs um, and that's done before the tongue and groove get machined into the board so we've made all these ourselves um, the larger boards which go across the middle um, as you can see here they are actually flat boards just with the tongue and groove on so one interesting detail for the um, the sides of the vehicle is when we cut the sample pieces out from the side to see what state they were in we noticed that the tongue and groove was not the standard tongue and groove you're going to get down at B&Q. So I took a couple of the samples up to Whitehill in Luton and I've actually had the cutters made for, um, to match the original one um, and I'm quite proud of the result that's come out as you can see from here. And so once all the painting's finished, uh, the next stage is going to be to reassemble everything, um, get the wheels back on which have been sent out for turning, and hopefully have a wagon ready for steam illuminations for the generator vehicle. Well, believe it or not, we actually have run out of time for this week's episode, so you're going to have to check back next week for the really satisfying bit of watching all of this being reassembled. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.